Welcome to another episode of We Don't Die. I'm your host, Sandra Champlain, author of the best-selling book called We Don't Die, A Skeptic's Discovery of Life After Death. And first of all, I have a little bit of a cold and a cough and sniffles, so if you hear that in my voice, don't worry, I feel fine. Uh, But just know that I I do sound a little funny today. So the first thing I want to do is just a shout out to the Facebook group of We Don't Die listeners. Just a few weeks ago, I announced that if you go to Facebook and you type in We Don't Die listeners, we have a private community for anybody who's interested in the things we talk about on the show, life after death, grief, how to have a powerful life. And in just a few weeks, we have well over 1,000 members. So just a shout out to you and an invite to anyone who wants to be involved to come join our Facebook group. Uh, Also, in September, very excited, I will be one of the guest speakers at the Afterlife Research and Education Symposium. And I do know many, many listeners are going to be there September 15th through 17th in Scottsdale, Arizona. And if you haven't gotten your ticket yet, or if you want to find out more, I invite you to go to afterlifestudies.org. And if you live halfway around the world and are not able to attend, I still say check out the website because there's some cutting edge information about what's happening in the world of studying the afterlife, being in, in communication with our loved ones, and so much more. So it's pretty darn cool. Now, on to our show. If you've listened to the past few episodes, which I think you have, you know that we've been talking about something called physical mediumship. Now, physical mediumship is when our loved ones can come through in a dark seance type situation and actually appear physically. So there is, uh, you can feel their touch, you can hear their voice as they spoke, and so much more. And it's a highly controversial subject because people say, well, why does it have to happen in the dark? And couldn't it just be the mediums getting out of their seats and, and manipulating things? And deep in my heart of hearts, I know that physical mediumship is real. I also know that throughout the years, there have been a lot of people that have been scammers or have preyed on vulnerable, grieving people. So to get to the bottom of it and to just have a real heart-to-heart conversation with someone who I believe, I believe she may be an expert in the world of physical mediumship, whether she calls her self that or not. Her name is Susan Filer. Now, Susan has a career in the nursing business, in nursing, and she's also a hypnotherapist. Coming from Portsmouth, England. She's the founder of the Gilbert Sanctuary. Now, the Gilbert Sanctuary aims to support the development of physical mediums today. So she has many stories to share, and I do think that she'll be a a good resource to ask some of these questions about, you know, why it happens in the dark and hear some of her experiences. So I'm really excited to introduce you to Sue today. Now, to find out more about Sue and the Gilbert Sanctuary, I want to give you the website gilbertsanctuary.co. Dot UK, or there's a very large Facebook group that she manages called Gilbert Sanctuary Portsmouth UK Physical Mediumship Associated Phenomena. Now I know that's a mouthful, but you can always go to we don't die radio.com and click on this episode with Susan and I have the link right there. So without further ado, I'd like to say Susan Filer, welcome to We Don't Die Radio. Thank you so much. It's so lovely to be invited, I say. Thank you so much. Expert, definitely not. (laughs) Yeah, but your passion, and I think when you give plenty of hours to a subject, you you are more, you have more expertise than some of us who have very few. So anyways, I'm happy to have you. You and I have been corresponding for a long time in the magical world of Facebook, so it's really great to be able to hear your voice today, Sue. Yeah, good to hear you too. <laughs> yeah, thanks for all you do. I love going to your Facebook group and seeing the things you post, and it's just oh, that's kind. extraordinary. So, so if you don't mind, tell us a little bit about your history, um, you know, because you're a nurse, yeah. and how did you end up stumbling upon this yeah. world of physical mediumship and even creating the Gilbert Sanctuary? I think it's, it's all quite fascinating, isn't it? Always in reflection when yes. you look back think, my word, this was all meant to be the direction that one finds when the time is right, isn't it, really, it seems to me. Yes. Yeah, I, um, 
I've had a career, well, a 40-year career, really, in nursing, midwifery, health visiting, counselling, whatever, and a complementary therapist and a healer now. And when I look back and think of the experiences perhaps I had on the wards, um, not as many as some of my colleagues, I might say, but I mean the um, paranormal experiences that I had on the ward, you know, you start to realise that... uh, Perhaps I was linked even then, if you see what I mean. Mm-hmm. Um, I can remember too, just just thoughts that are coming into my head sure. now. Really, when when I used to, I such a young person. I mean, when did that happen? <laughs> such a I young know. person. It happens. Laying, yeah. I mean, the expression is laying people out. It's not very nice, is it? You know, the last rites. Let's call it like. Mm-hmm. I used to think to myself, you know, I'm doing this with reverence, with respect. But I'm not feeling, other than my own family, of course, I'm not feeling extreme um, grief. And it's only now that I look back and I think, you know, I think I knew then, really, that it was just a process of respect for the vessel that's left, isn't it? And that you knew someone was going on somewhere better. Um, So I don't beat myself up quite so much now. Not about not feeling for the these individuals so much, or well, that was the way I act, saw it anyway. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um. And I think moving on from yeah, moving on from that aspect, I I started a um a course. Gosh, about thirty five years ago, you know, if not more, at a, at a, an organisation called Joseph Carey Psychic Foundation Charity again which, again, I so respect. I didn't need, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the churches, but I didn't actually need to go the, the spiritual church route. Uh, Tony and uh, Pam Ashenden, very experienced mediums, trance mediums. Len Burden was physical medium at the time, although I never met him. And that's actually where I started psychic development courses, if you like, and that's where the actual program of development began I guess the guidance and the help and then you realize really you're in service to the boys in blue aren't you it's a vocation it's a calling it's not a hobby so many people have said to me it's just a hobby Sue isn't it I find that quite a bizarre comment really um to me it's just something that's innate in you isn't it or in a lot of us really Some of us realize it early, some of us later, some of us perhaps don't. But that was a lovely journey. And within that, I did uh, um, my two-year spiritual healing course. And uh, one continues to go there and do different courses, integrate different energies, learn about different vibrations. And I thought, well, as we know, all mediumship's healing, isn't it, really? You know, any aspect, physical, mental, trance, whatever, it's all about healing and helping other people, really. And when we finished at uh, this lovely organization in Portsmouth, you know, one tends to think, well, where do we go from here? We, uh, in our development, or how are we going to use it? Where are we going to take it forward? And I started doing mental mediumship groups at home. Well, as you know, you know, the conditions don't have to be quite the same as uh, physical mediumship. And that was lovely. But uh, I thought, you know, I was given this impression, and I'm sure by spirit, I was guided really to convert part of my house into a sanctuary. But I wasn't aware at the time why, which again, I think is lovely. Again, looking back in reflection, I really didn't quite know why. I thought maybe it was to take my patients down there because I do a lot of cancer care in um, hypnotherapy. I thought maybe, you know, they really wanted me to have a special sacred place for that. So the the conversion began, was intended to be a non-profit making sanctuary. Any funds left over really for Marie Curie or, or Macmillan. But, you know, the interesting thing is at the same time as this uh, building was going on, I had a reading with a friend, <clears throat> and the aspect of that I thought was quite funny, really. Uh, she saw with me a trumpet, and I said, you know, um, Heidi, 
I don't play the trumpet. What? what are you <laughs> <laughs> yeah, never forgotten this. She said, "No, no, no, Sue. I mean a musical trumpet. Um, sorry, I mean a, a seance room trumpet, mm-hmm. um, like they use at Jenny's sanctuary." And I said, "Oh, fine. Gosh, how wonderful." She said, "I really see this trumpet with you." So, again, looking in reflection, I thought, "Gosh, that's another." indicator isn't it really you know to the move that's coming forward really and I thought well okay I'm going to take myself off uh, researching it take myself off to Jenny's sanctuary and sit in um, a physical mediumship circle there and this is where I first met Ron and Jean at Jenny's sanctuary which I'm sure you've heard of um, it's existed forever, really. No, Lovely I have people. not. Have, uh, have you not? Yeah, no. Jenny Sanctuary is in Roxton. Where's that? Banbury. Broxton Heath in Banbury. They're still going now. They don't do quite as much physical mediumship. Maybe Bill Meadows goes there, a few others. But anyway, this is where I went. And they're, they're lovely people with a great tale of their own, if you ever talk to them, as okay. to why that was set, was set up, really, um, Ron's daughter being the main cause. But anyway, I went there and I sat in seance with Bill Meadows, who's one of our physical mediumship, physical mediums of today. Lovely people. And all I can say is I just uh, felt so at home. You know, I, I, I think a lot of people usually go with a friend, don't they, to the to these sort of seances because they're not quite sure how they're going to feel. Exactly. Um, and they're thinking, am I going to sit in the dark? What's going to happen? Um, and all I can say is I sat right at the back, no problem with that because it's a fairly big place, and just felt so at home. And I just remember uh, the little soul, Marie, isn't it? Yes, because Bill, Bill and Colleen come here now for, for demos. We're so lucky. Little Marie just said um oh lady in red that's what they called me lady in red you've done this before you know many lives ago you've done this before <laughs> I thought, bless her maybe that's why i felt so comfortable do you see my point i do so let me just yeah. back up a little bit because some people yeah, have course. not heard about physical mediumship of course. Uh, so i want to make sure we're all inclusive and others are have heard the last few episodes and want to know more so when you yeah. entered uh jenny sanctuary it was a group of people and you were sitting in the back in the dark so that... absolutely yes because okay. it all works lots of red light i have to say intermittently but it's predominantly in the dark yes Okay, and then Little Marie, this is a spirit Some, person. Yeah, Little Marie is part of his spirit team. Um, he has three or four people, but Marie is, is the little one that uh, comes through, full of fun. Okay. Yeah, and usually, usually the aim of that is to relax people, really. Lift the vibrations, jolly good fun, relax everybody, see that they're okay, you know? Yeah, I've heard laughter really helps build the energy. Gosh, yes, and I, I think this is, uh, isn't that an interesting concept that so many people think that mediumship generally, especially, um, yeah, especially physical, needs to be somber and uh, all dreadfully serious, you know, like you would be, I guess, in respect in a church if you're going for service, but in fact, the more laughter, the more fun, the more love. Yes. Um, the easier it is for our dear friends to actually come in on that vibration. So, oh. um, so yeah, it's, I, I just want to say when I, I went by myself to my very first you? seance at, at Banyan mm-hmm. and I, you know, I was oh, scared. Yeah. I didn't know what to expect. And, mm-hmm. you know, we, we sat in a circle in a darkened room and the, the medium sat in a cabinet behind, uh, like this, wooden cabinet with a black curtain in front and I thought oh no and then we started singing songs and this little voice came out who was you know childlike very playful person who just created so much fun and laughter and in just a few minutes time I realized this is nothing to fear this is fun it's love I and and it just you know the word seance can be from my past, my experience, seems pretty serious and scary. Yes. I, I, you know, you've got a really good point there because even Stuart Alexander, and he's a dear friend, and we do talk on occasion, 
You know, and even he said, and I was like, people still think of it as little old ladies sitting around a table in a fairly dark room saying, is there anybody there? And it's always portrayed as a bit spooky, isn't it? That's the word. It's always portrayed. So why wouldn't people think that? You're quite right, really. Yeah, I was afraid (laughs) to say the word seance. So anyways, continue on. So there you are in the darkened room, sitting in the back, and little Marie calls you the lady in red. Yeah, it's very, very, very strong. I mean, I was dressed in red, so me, obviously it's more evidence for me. Not that one needs it, you know, but I respect that people do generally because it's all about evidence, isn't it, really? It is. Yes, yeah, so I'm invited to the cabinet on and off, and I felt, crikey, I'm being really privileged here, and in fact, a little embarrassed with um, so many people there. I thought, gosh, you know, I feel like I'm being singled out, but obviously not. There's a reason for it. But as I say, she... Um, uh, called me to the cabinet several times, and with Bill, I'll just talk about this one in particular. They're all awesome in their own way. All of them are different, but they're all awesome in their own way. Um, and Bill's little Marie, along the line, she's got two. Or, he's got two or three other spirit team members. She gives everybody a hug, but what they do is she's still in the cabinet, and they will invite everybody, which I think is rather lovely. This time they invite everybody at some stage of the seance to come up to the cabinet, stand in front of the cabinet, and then little Marie, cabinet curtains, if you can imagine, bellow out because they have to, or she has to stay in the cabinet, but it's totally solid form and, they, and she hugs you, speaks to you, obviously, and there's these little tiny hands, and Bill's got quite big hands. So again, if you see what I mean, people are thinking, oh, more evidence. Um, but what a beautiful thing, you know, in this particular medium, you actually get touched by solid form. That is spectacular, because all I've heard presently is people sitting in circles, holding hands and not moving. So to be able to walk up to the cabinet and feel, yeah. a, were you standing there? Was Did it feel like a small child? Yeah, absolutely. And it, well, it, it's just like, um, let's say... Ten, eight, eight to ten year old little soul behind the cat. I mean, you know, you feel the spirit energy anyway. I'm sure you do. Maybe not everyone's a sensitive, but you can feel the spirit energy, so you know spirit are there. But she, she's a solid little form, and as she hugs people, she really. I mean, it's just that you've got the curtain between you two. She just puts her arms right round you, says something lovely. God bless. Okay, next one, please. <laughs> really so sweet so I think people are rather um, and wouldn't they be especially if it's the first time rather emotional really yeah of course now is Bill Meadows uh, tied to the chair like I hear from other yes and Bill as I say they come here and what Bill does actually, and Colleen his wife is his control and they're just they're beautiful people been doing it such a long time he um or I should say Colleen has actually made a pad for them, which is really Velcro pad, but it's, you know, so wraps around his wrists in place of the cable ties, which, uh, um, excuse me, others use, but there is a place there to add cable ties if they want. But no, his legs are tied to the chair and he has these Velcro pads um, to stabilize his arms to the chair. Yes, and as you can imagine, that's all done. At the beginning, someone independently checks the room, independently checks the medium mm-hmm. and the cabinet. And again, I'm going back to the beginning there. Prior to that, as you probably know, body body search and a metallic um, search. So there's an awful lot of um, professional, I think. Yeah, to know there's no trickery. Preparation. No yeah, trickery. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think people people need to know that. Yeah. It's not shabby. To me, it's done professionally. It's not shoddy. It really needs to no. be done, doesn't it? Safety for the medium, safety for the sitters, and confidence and reassurance for both, isn't it, really? Yeah, yeah. there's got to be the integrity. And even with the Velcro straps, everybody knows how loud it is for Velcro to oh, yeah. release. You know, so it, it, this is not uh, Bill Meadows behind the curtain pretending to be a 8- to 10-year-old girl. No. Of course. Of course, and I just say I know I was privileged mm-hmm. uh, to also have, I'm trying to think now, you have little Marie and then you have 
Father James and Jonathan, and it's all, as you say and as you know, jolly good fun. They're all bantering and it's all jolly good fun. It's not necessarily masses of messages. You know, that's one aspect of physical mediumship, isn't it, which is wonderful. But there are other aspects as well, philosophy or, or just bantering and giving people this awareness that they're real people not something in the medium subconscious or something that's a little bit like air floating around absolutely solid people mm-hmm. and i think i was yes that's what i was asked to the cabinet again and jonathan one of bill's spirit team fairly large tall chap just said would you like to dance with me and these great big platter of hands gosh bellowed the curtain out again you know as I say they stay in the cabinet well they did then and actually put his arms around me and I could see his legs um <laughs> actually dancing with me on that spot for a moment wow and and I remember Colleen saying which obviously she's trying to reassure those that really haven't had a lot of experience in this, I can assure you. A, my husband doesn't can't dance, and he hasn't got as big a, per, a body as Jonathan. So, again, to me, wonderful evidence, maybe, for the new, new person that's going along, you know, as well as the love, as you know, that spirit bring with them, whatever they do. Yes, you know? yeah. So, yes, that was my... Um, my first experience, and of course you get the degree of phenomena. Uh, you know what I mean, table levitation, trumpets spinning around, toys being played with, especially at Christmas, opening the toys, which is fabulous, you know, but um, the argument always is, isn't it? You know, phenomena is no proof of, ev- no, no evidence of life after death, so life after life, but it's still something wonderful happening, isn't it? Oh, it's fantastic. Still, to have yeah, absolutely amazing. To go yeah. to uh, Scott Milligan's, uh, he called it a, I think Christmas tree seance, and yes, having a right. Christmas tree in the center of you know our circle of people, and after yes. it started, and his uh, spirit helper there, Daniel, um, was right. the one bringing yeah. in all the humor, but then to, he, you know to say the children have arrived and to hear all these Christmas yeah. presents being unwrapped yeah. at the same time, and then toys being played with all at the same time, moving throughout the room. Yeah. You know. I'm, so, I'm so glad you've experienced oh. it. I, just, I mean, they're all fabulous, but I always, yeah. we always have a Christmas tree seance here with somebody. And I mean, they're Spectacular. just that, The energy is just a little bit special somehow. They're all wow. special. But, you know, yeah. when you've got these little people and you can hear them tearing, tearing the... Um, <laughs> yeah, and when, I remember when Bill was here one time, they took the didgeridoo into the cabinet and played it. You know, I thought, my God, what evidence, really? Because um, my didgeridoo is quite a way down the um, sanctuary seance room um, from the cabinet. And wow. I've just been joking and saying, well, you know, perhaps you'd like to play the didge. And they said, well, what's that? I said, it's that large instrument over there from Australia. And you hear it going into the cabinet, and it's not the best in quality. And you know what a didgeridoo sounds like. Yes. <laughs> and you hear them playing down the didgeridoo. Absolutely amazing, isn't it, really? <laughs> How many people are in the room when these are happening? Do you mean here or at Jenny's? Uh, how about both? Well, Jenny's, I think, possibly, I haven't been there for two or three years because I've got the sanctuary now but I would say about 20 okay what we have here because I keep it small and intimate a bit like Stuart Stuart did in his um well in Ray's home in Hull the most I would take here is 12 but you know what and I'm not saying anything's better because it isn't and whatever I say is about my opinion anyway you know it's always just about opinion isn't it I'm not stating making any statements of this is better but I've always found, probably over the last seven years with all the guys and girls that may come here, that the smaller the venue, <clears throat> this is just a concept, the smaller the venue, the more amazing phenomena you seem to get. But that makes sense to a degree. I know this is another discu- theme of discussion. It's okay. but But because they come regularly here, um, the mediums that come, 
I guess the spirit team get used to it because they become a spirit family, don't they, Sandra? You can imagine that. You know, you get so fond of them. They get to know, certainly here, they get to know me. They get to know the environment. They get to know they're safe. They get to know I screen people very thoroughly. So maybe if you've got an ectoplasmic medium, they're going to be a little bit more reassured that they're keeping the medium safe, aren't they? That's always their priority. They're going to be a little bit reassured that... um, the, the sitters aren't going to um, damage the medium because, as you know, it's sitters that kill, not spirit. You know, the, the damage I've seen over the years or heard of, uh, of silly sitter behaviour. So, yes, we take 12. Um, it's absolutely lovely. And I, I, I guess over the years, like all the centres, I guess Banyan, Jenny, Scarborough, you know, like Cobra Hill or whatever, the energy must build, mustn't it? And you must get residual energy in the room. We also have here... Three groups, you know, where I'm supporting and hopefully helping people to develop their spiritual gifts. Um, so really, the energy is building all the time. We have psychic surgeries here on occasion. I won't do any more than that because um, Spirit asked me to keep it for purely for physical mediumship. Um, and as you probably know, mental mediumship is just as awesome. And as Stuart Alexander says again, it's about quality of evidence, isn't it, really? As long as the evidence is good, they're both as good as each other. Mm-hmm. It's, a level of ev- it's a level of evidence, really. Um, but we just keep it for physical mediumship and the groups and one-to-one cabinet work. We've got a few people that are... What does that mean, one-to-one? Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, it's, uh, what that That's means okay. is that a trance medium, for instance, um, wanting to perhaps explore the possibility of developing deeper states, um, maybe physical mediumship, will come here and sit in the cabinet, pardon me, and I sit outside as the control, and we just work together with he and the, or she and, and the spirit team possibly for several weeks and see where we go and see what the potential of their development is maybe. And if they're dedicated and committed enough, they'll probably go off and set up their own group and sit like so many groups around the UK and over the pond um, for their own development. But they have to start somewhere. So I call it one-to-one cabinet work like a a lot of us do um, around and about. And I don't charge for this. People just come and contribute to to charity really but that's lovely too because most of them are trance mediums so they're trancing anyway or you know, they're in an altered state as you know there's so many different levels anyway from inspirational speaking isn't there to the the um <clears throat> excuse me the physical mediumship person that's absolutely gone but i think for me i learn so much and this is what i adore i mean never mind helping and supporting other people which is what this sanctuary is about I'm learning all the time. Every spirit team is different. And once you've got a good connection with the spirit team, um, obviously they will give us advice on what they need. You know, the lighting in the room may be, whether it's going to be ectoplasmic or whether it's going to be energy or whether it's going to be a combination because we've got three groups here and each one's different, meaning the mode that they actually use of energy, you know, to actually communicate with us really so that's the one-to-one and can you see how absolutely enthralling it could be really yes i'd like to come (laughs) visit myself (laughs) you could sit in the cabinet yes i I did it i did a banyan and i thought oh i'm in the cabinet i bet you did yeah yeah it was great there you are so you've experienced it anyway Uh, you sorry sorry to interrupt sue but this excites me because i think Mental mediumship is great because sometimes that's all you need is somebody saying something that they couldn't possibly know, you know, some message or some specifics. But it was only maybe a year ago that I actually found out about uh, physical mediumship. And I thought, no, that can't be. That can't be. It just, I mean, can't be. And I, it took me actually going to research it and read books on it and now I've sat in three uh, seances 
and yes. and and I've felt the touch. I felt I've seen things flying around yes. the room, the presence being yes. open, and then above and beyond that, hearing voices coming from yes. places in the room that th- th- there shouldn't be voices coming from, but ta- speaking as someone's loved one, you know, speaking with their yes. voice. Uh, yeah. People being able to feel maybe the uh, stubble of a deceased husband's beard against yeah. their face, it's, smelling the cologne that they wore, yeah. you know, so yeah. many things. And I think to me, uh, you know, I, I, I'm excited because, you know, part of me thinks that there are many people on planet Earth who are now sitting in circle for physical phenomena, but there's only a few people that are out there talking about it and and it it's yes. so easy to say it can't be it's got to be fraud but to know that there's probably oh, it's so hundreds it's, yeah. of groups around the world and so to be able to talk to someone yes. who is intimately has created your sanctuary and has uh, uh, groups meeting regularly and when we can sit in a group of 10 or 12 people uh, or less uh, regularly, and you know for yourself, you know, these are people you know, love, and trust, and these things yeah. are happening. I mean, that is fantastic. I just think, you know, I look upon it, I remember Victor Zamet saying to me, you know, I was chatting to him, it's just a safe haven for people to develop, isn't it? And I thought, you know what, he's right. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not talking about the publics that come here, I'm just talking about, I mean, our own groups are closed, because as you probably know, you know, you can't keep having sitters coming in they have to be closed otherwise it affects the harmony and the blending but talking about people coming just to do cabinet work maybe um and see how they feel because it isn't for everybody even the trance medium sometimes think oh gosh i'd rather stay where i am i don't really want to go into deeper states i mean it's not about what they want it's what spirit wants but they make that decision but the thing is it's having a safe um place isn't it where people can come and feel looked after and you know i realized somewhere down the line it's not just about the medium feeling safe it's about the spirit team feeling safe and i thought this was lovely and i've got to say this because it made me chuckle like most things do with our spirit friends they call me the spiritual midwife that's great i thought i thought how blooming clever because i don't practice now but um, I was a midwifery sister for quite some time. And I could see what they mean because, you know, when Rob Murray, bless him, sometimes comes over from Australia and, and I won't say who, but, you know, when he gets his, his team through, I'm actually saying, hey, that's great. Come on, keep coming, keep coming. Well done, you. Don't give up. And I thought, I suppose I do sound like a midwife, don't sure. I, really? Yes. <laughs> But how fabulous, really, the, the humor in it, but the logic in it, isn't it, really? Wow. Yeah, so I, 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 thought, I thought it was quite lovely. And I just see Gilberts as, um, I mean, that's my mother's maiden name. It's a legacy to her, and that's why it's called that, really. Oh, that's very special. As um, somewhere where you just give, 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 don't you? Love and energy. And once people realize that um, it's not about going somewhere and expecting and getting stuff for yourself. The more you go and give, the more you get back. But, you know, as you can imagine, that takes ages for people to realize because most people, including me at some stage, it's sort of me, myself and I, isn't it? Rather than going somewhere, giving your love, giving your energy to help people on the other, spirit on the other side of life. And I think that's what I find so lovely. And we were always told here in one of my groups, because I, I sit for development, but, you know, i sort of more interested in helping other people. We were always told by a spirit team with a chap called Bill Roberts probably five years ago that whatever the work is that you do here will be 50-50. You're helping us and we're teaching you. And I thought, isn't that beautiful, Sandra? You know, yes. we're, we're giving an environment, I hope, the best environment for the most amazing energies, you know, the best we can to help them. But they have to learn, don't they? And everybody tends to think, maybe not so much in the publics, you know, they all know what to do. They're going to come through and they're going to say hi. But in fact, we've got to encourage and support and suggest and help them through in the early stages. And I thought, isn't that lovely? And in reflection over the years, I've had them come back 
dear souls, you know, within teams and say, oh, thank you, thank you for all that you're doing. Thank you for helping us in the medium. They're just people like us, aren't they? I just think that's so rewarding, isn't it, really, what one can offer? Mm. Yes. Could you describe a little bit about the difference between the ectoplasmic energy and, or ectoplasm and energy? Because there's a a big question that always comes up. Why does it have to be done in the dark? And, you know, what happens in the red light? Have you ever seen anything happen in the, in the red light? Just to describe what the difference is. You mean, well, Bill Meadows is an energy medium. And I'm sure you've probably spoken to dear Robin Foy, you know, about this. Yes. Goal is awesome, isn't it? As I say, I promote it as much as I can for him. Absolutely wonderful. Um, <clears throat> the way I would just say, I mean, ectoplasm is ectoplasmic. Something is within the body, isn't it? Something within a, as I'm sure you know, within a cellular production in everybody, but in the physical medium, they just have that rather adequate amount to be able to manifest so that the spirit world can actually work with it. Um, Because you could debate on this for ages, couldn't you? And the energy, the energy concept from what I'm being told on both sides of life is spirit bringing their own energy from their side of life, using earth energy and using energy from the sitters. Now, how you can actually put that in... uh, how you can actually put that into a package to make people understand unless they sit in it isn't easy, is it? No. <laughs> and, I mean, you know, someone like, I suppose, Warren, Kai, uh, Stuart, talking about stuff moving around and, uh, and others, I imagine, they're ectoplasmic rods. But, you know, I thought to myself, well, when Bill's sitting and maybe others that have worked in an energy wire way over the years, they haven't actually got ectoplasmic um, material, have they? So it's got to be some sort of amalgamation of energy, hasn't it, from those things that spirits are telling me they're using. They bring it themselves, they use the earth energy and they use energy from sitters. Uh, But when you're going from light and dark, it's interesting, isn't it, Sandra, because Bill still sits in the dark, although he's an energy medium, But he uses messages of red lights on and off, you know, and you're constantly checking the medium or the spirit are asking you to check the medium. And maybe when his arm rotates, you know, full circle under the cabinet, we're asked to turn the red light on. And the same with, I'm sure you you know, with the ectoplasmic medium. And I, I think just for me, when you get a debate from people of why the dark, why the dark... You know, I listen to Colin Fry, who I respect gratefully, you know, on our Assumpty videos. And certainly, <coughs> pardon me, Stuart Alexander, and you're thinking about, I suppose, yeah, well, all of them, ectoplasmic or energy, why blackout conditions? And Stuart would always say, you know, the seance rooms are lab- a laboratory for the spirit world. And he said, we need to produce the conditions for them to work in. And they have always said they need to start in the dark. Um, And although they're keen to prove reality, they have to start in the dark. And I thought, well, to me, I have no problem with that. It's everyone else that has problems with that, isn't it, really? Yes. Um, And he says it's simpler to understand, to start the process of physical mediumship, you know, life in the dark room, like the uterus starts, you know, life in the uterus starts in the dark. And I I really get this. Some mediums, gosh, because you know I research on Gilbert so many of the past, don't I? And they're so fabulous. It's so rich, the learning, you know, and so many of them were thought to be fraudulent. You know, it's nothing new, is it? It's been going on for jolly years when Mm -hmm. you read it. And I think, gosh, you know, um, yeah, excuse me. Some of these mediums, I'm sure... Um, has been said by those professionals to Robin Foy that I would respect, have probably, especially those that have done it in the light in the past, which in fact I believe is um, not quite so. As Kai, if you ever talk to Kai, you'll find that, and he's such a beautiful chap to chat to. In fact, they might have had light momentarily, but people portray it as if the whole thing was in the light. Well, it jolly isn't. They were momentary. 
You know, but I think it's jolly true that some mediums are so jolly powerful, I'm probably thinking of the past, that they can do that. Do you see what I mean, Sandra? But yes. others are developing. It depends on the level of the medium, it seems to me, and the developmental level of the spirit team, because we're all learning. So maybe people like Dee Dee Ho and the others, they talk about doing it and the like, just have that amazing ability to be able to. But these are all the detailed variables of understanding physical mediumship generally, isn't it? That's what it seems to me, rather than clumping them all together and saying, well, he did it in the light. Why can't you? Um, and the Stuart said, you know, don't you think, because you know, Stuart Annis, don't you think I would give up a year of my life to work in the light? He said, but my spirit team don't want that. That's what they're all working towards. And that's how I see it. And I'm quite prepared and happy to sit and be used in whatever way to help um, spirit use their medium towards the light. And I guess since I've been doing this with the guys that have come here and even Bill, I have seen more and more red light longer, maybe candlelight, maybe green light, blue light, whatever they choose, um, oil lamp light. Um, they bring their own light sometimes. Fluorescent really? light. I've seen fluorescent lights um, in the ectoplasm lately, you know, floating around. And I remember asking afterwards and was told, yeah, they actually take it from some of the fluorescent strips and they bring their own light. And, you know, not for long, but the potential possibility is all there. And I think, well, probably not in my lifetime. Maybe this is going to happen eventually because that's what they're all sitting for. And that's where I get frustrated. And why would people not understand? I mean, I don't blame them not understanding, really. But even when you tell them that, they don't take it. But it's like anything that you have to work jolly hard for. But you're working with a dynamic um, on the other side of life, aren't you? And I think so many just don't listen to their spirit team anymore, do they? It's want, 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 I want, let's use this, let's use that. Well, should we perhaps ask the spirit team? And that's the basis of it, really, isn't it? I don't mean that you lay down and listen to everything they say and do everything they say without questioning, but a bit of respect, isn't it, really, that rather than rushing in and doing perhaps what is going to slow them down anyway. So I just find the whole thing so fascinating. Mm -hmm. Just listen to the spirit team, and I think... Stuart's um, explanation, really, that, you know, it just seems to be easier, certainly for new mediums, to actually start in the dark. Mm -hmm. And that's I, the way it is. I don't have a problem with it, but no, I also I know. know from the skeptical point of view, yes. Sue, I've had it, you know, how do I say, I've had my heart broken or I've trusted someone yes. that's proven... In mediumship, you mean? In mediumship. Well, in different areas of life, but I yes, know. of course. And I've yes. heard of it in mediumship that people yes. will give their money. Some people pay a lot of money when we're grieving and we want to believe something so, and then oh, somebody yes. turns yes. out to be proven fraudulent. I yes. mean, we're afraid yes. of that. So it's so yes. you know, it's yes. so it's hard to just. I mean, maybe to ourselves we'll believe it, but we won't share it with anybody because, you know, I mean, when the first time I started talking about physical mediumship, I was so scared because I thought people are going to say, but it's in the dark. you got to prove it. You da, da, yeah. da, da, da. And I know, and, and, I, and I also believe, um, I, I talked to a nice name, man named Carl, you know, Carl. Yes, uh, know, yeah. And uh, he did a, a survey once, and I, I believe he said there it was over 500 circles around the world this is just yeah, Facebook there are, there are, that he yeah. did that people are actively doing this they're sitting yeah. for for these things mm -hmm. and you know they're not open and really out there talking about it because it Absolutely. is yeah it, you know just, but that's why i mean obviously yeah, sure on gilbert but that, that 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 that's a lot of why um I've got Gilberts, you know, well, for lots of reasons, really, but encouraging people to come forward with their group development, which yes. is so beautiful because you'll find, or I'm finding, there's a lot of similarities how spirit um, are working with different groups and linking between two spirit teams. But yes, they don't. And I, I say to them on private message, oh, they, say, they share stuff with me privately, which is, again, lovely. But I say, hey, what do you think? Would you perhaps like to share that on the forum so other people can learn? I said, I'm never stop learning. And other people right. need to see how long it takes, the commitment, the years. 
oh, well, I'd rather not. Yes, but that's fear. why, yeah. it's, you know, lots of them are still very, very reserved to do so because of the mockery and the ridicule. And that's why I put on the forum, you won't get that here because I won't have it. But you're right, out in society, that's going to be quite a, a an understandable reason for not coming forward, isn't it, really? Yeah, one of the best books yeah. I've read was the one uh, written about Alec Harris. Oh, he's gorgeous. Yeah, my oh, book here. That's right. It is so it's good. Amazing. And, it, and it's a story his wife had written about how yes, they first Luke. met. And, yeah, and, and they fell in love. And, and you know, she was told that uh, that he would be a medium. Of course, neither one of them believed in any of this. And he turned into one of the... It's a love story, most, isn't it, in a way? Cause fascinating. He, 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 was bored out of, he was bored out of his toes. He yeah. wouldn't sit in the cabin at the Cheeky, and he was so gifted, he got there in the end. But it, but to hear <laughs> all of these stories about yeah. uh, what was produced, and some of it in dim lighting as well, people yes, could see, absolutely. a lot of touch. Uh, I, I wanted to ask you, um, besides the phenomena coming through, have you witnessed people's loved ones coming through with personal messages? I haven't actually. I mean, I've had my own, my yeah. grandmother coming through with Stuart Alexander and that I mean having spoken about Jenny's sanctuary all those years ago the next visitation I had and we went up as a group up to Hull you know which is four or five hours from here um, and sat with him as an ectoplasmic medium Uh, and this is direct voice not materialized form Mm -hmm. my my grandmother came my grandma Gilbert funnily enough came through um, and for me, there was enough evidence for me not to be thinking, mm, not sure about this. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. the evidence you're given, isn't it? Um, other people, yeah, I haven't actually heard a lot. I have to say, I know, I don't know if you, who you follow, bless you, probably a lot. But, you know, I'm, I'm hearing from dear friends that I consider to be so over the pond and in Germany that Kai is getting, because um, I do like Kai, as I say, to super guy he's getting um materializations in red light but only in experimental private control conditions because we've seen the photograph footage you know mm-hmm. but whether they are well actually i think the last one was i think there was a suggestion that this person was linked to someone in the group but that, that's just reading the report sandra i wasn't there but, I mean, that's my feeling. I'm thinking, oh, gosh, I hope he's getting there. Do you know what I mean? To that level that you don't know, do you? And this is what it's about, supporting them. But I'm talking about people in the PM, not these poor souls out there that are searching and need support to go and visit seances. You know, it isn't right. easy, is it, when, when you haven't got complete proof. And so many guys and gals, as you probably know, in the, in PM will say, well, it isn't. Well, it takes them a long time to get to this way of thinking, I think. They think to themselves, and well, they say, it really isn't my place to prove anything. It's my place to help people and encourage people to come and see for themselves, and if it's not for them, that's fine. But I suppose there's something in that, isn't there? You know, when I sat at Jenny's one time, I think it was with Kevin Tom Morris years ago, this soul sat next to me, and I, I so admired him. I said, you know, have you ever sat in a seance before? And I think he was a mental medium. And he said, no, I don't. What's materialization? I thought, oh, my God, bless him. He doesn't really quite know what's what. Anyway, he sat through the seance and he was fine. You could feel he was quite fine. And I said at the end, how did you feel? What did you think about it? And he said, well, um, he said, you know, it was rather amazing and a lovely experience. He said, but I'd rather work with spirit in a different way. And I thought, crikey me, what a lovely way of putting it. Definitely. Rather than saying, oh, that was blah, 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 and going out and abusing people, which, you know, I've been to a Bill Meadows seance where where, where poor Colleen had a, a jolly old sitter go out there and rip her off. You know, it wasn't for them, and I totally understand that, don't you? You know, it isn't for everybody, is it? But to be so horrid to people isn't necessary, so... I can see where people are coming from when they say it's my job to help you along the way, Mm -hmm. but your job to do the research, because a lot of people expect it done for them, you know. I'm I'm not talking about those that are a little scared and a little worried. They need support and love, don't they? Um, But some of it, they've got to do the footage. Well, you did, didn't you? I did. (laughs) What I had to know. You know, it's one Mm. thing. 
you know, there's not going to be a YouTube video that's going to convince me of this. To go yeah. personally be there, witness what I witnessed. And we're all on our own individual journey. So there's, if somebody yeah. doesn't want to listen to this, they don't have to. I don't need to push my thoughts on anybody. But for those people that are interested or want to know more, you know, this is where we yeah. can offer these conversations. But I want to ask you, too, some different things that happen in in the seances. If we could talk a little bit of maybe what transfiguration is or apports. Uh, hmm. Th- those kind of things happen, have you witnessed? Transfiguration, I would say, I see in the public seances very little, you know, because usually this, this is me, mm-hmm. spirit team come with their agenda. I mean, you know, people often say, oh, can so, I wonder so-and-so will come. Can we ask this? Can we ask that? And I say, well, you go along with respect. You just give your love and your energy. And usually over a two-hour period, the team have already worked out what they're going to do, you know. So I don't find they actually, this is for me, do transfiguration that often. But transfiguration may be in um, <clears throat> stuff in home circles here. Uh, I've seen some jolly good transfiguration in a couple of souls that clearly have presented themselves that way but nobody are recognized that's what I would say but that's from my point of view I'm sure other people have I'm quite sure Gordon Garforth is supposed to be amazing isn't he I don't know if you've heard of him but obviously I've um, heard the name but don't know anything about him but what yeah. is transfiguration that is witnessing well, well I mean the, what, what, what I've actually seen in myself and Dougie Osborne's another all awesome one he's a gorgeous soul in, in Australia he has an ectoplasmic mask basically cover his face really um you know his face changes but you can see it's an ectoplasmic mask i've actually seen um privileged to have done really and it was obvious sometimes for me transfiguration is a bit mm, don't know and if it's like that I, i'm not totally convinced you know because believe me i'm not easily convinced although i'm passionate about it I yeah, still you don't know. is it, is it like done you a, a red <laughs> light suit so, yeah always always in red for us, anyway, always in gray, red light, mm-hmm. green light, or so you, blue light. You're looking at the person, the medium, and yeah, an, an ectoplasmic yeah. mask kind of covers their yeah. face, and it changes yeah. to look like other people. Is that a, yes, absolutely. Okay. But I've also seen it, this is just out of interest, we have also seen it with one chat we had here, again, Will Roberts, like a funny, I remember these names. Mm-hmm. Lovely people. You meet so many people along the way, don't you? That's what I love about this. Mediumship should bring people together. The networking's lovely. But Bill Roberts had a full body transfiguration. Now, although I didn't recognize the face, um, I didn't recognize the person, he also was trancing at the same time, which I believe Gordon Garforth does. And the soul that came through was really quite disfigured. And he told us his tale about cerebral palsy, and he was quite a grumpy, bitter person. But, you know, it was very interesting because there was no way Bill, you know, no no way the medium. But his um, legs, you know how they do, bless them, were contorted, his legs and his arms. And I, and you know, like I'm sure you would, you pick up mediumistically anyway. And I said, my goodness me, you look as if you were a handicapped person this side of life. And then it got stronger, because, you know, if you talk with acknowledgement, it usually helps them, doesn't it? Voice vibration helps them to actually manifest a bit more. Mm. So that was interesting, Sandra, you know, and I had no doubt about that. And you a witnessed it, it with your eyes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, gosh, yes. And that's here. Sorry, that's here. And there would only have been two or three of us outside. But also, as I say, the combination, if you like, not only of seeing the present, excuse me, the presentation um, and it wasn't overshadowing, you know, I mean, there's a difference to the actual presentation, but also this gentleman talking about his condition, and as he was talking, he was gyrating a little bit like um, the poor souls with this severe condition, if it's severe, do. So, to, you know, but that was full body. I've only ever seen that once, but um, I think possibly Gordon Garforth does it, and he trances at the same time too. But the chap I've seen in Australia is just what I've seen, um, <clears throat> Dougie Osborne is just what I've seen on, on the computer um, in his circle. And again, sitting seven or eight years, like anybody that's really dedicated, really in for the hard yards, the long years, they do, don't they? Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
you know, it's such a, such an admirable thing. But yeah, for me, transfiguration is, um, from what I've seen, I know it clearly exists, but from what I've seen, I haven't seen many, 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 many that, is also, that are as awesome, say, as direct voice or um, ectoplasm floating around, you know? Mm-hmm. And direct voice is not mm-hmm. voice coming out of the medium. Is that correct? No, it's, it's um, as you probably know, it's, a, excuse me, an, ecto, an ectoplasmic voice box that is um, almost on the shoulder, sort of actually seen in red light. It's supposed to be attached to the medium's nervous system, so it's still attached, but it's not anywhere near their voice box. Do you know what I mean? So like Leslie Flint, like the... Yeah, absolutely, the yes. Leslie Flint. Yeah, yeah, Le- Leslie Flint being one of the beautifuls. But, you know, um, one would hope that all of our ectoplasmic mediums uh, are doing that to different levels, you know, yeah. um, have it, having this direct voice. But that is what is amazing, you know, in some of the seances here, I've had two or three souls talking through this box at the same time, bantering to each other, you know, and if anyone wants to query, well, that the medium's a ventriloquist, I mean, it's impossible, isn't it, to take off three voices, for goodness sake. <laughs> you know? That's crazy. That's great. Yeah, I think it's and they're talking to each other like we talk, and jolly fun, and jolly banter, and sort of, oh, be quiet, I'm talking, excuse me, don't talk to me like that, you know, this sort of banter like you'd get between people. Um, yeah. That's so, great, all, Sue. All pretty, I won- that. all pretty wonderful. Yeah, all wow. pretty wonderful. And I think I am extremely privileged when they come to sit and to give and to help and to enable uh, and to watch the development. Some of them have been coming here for four or five years, you know, to do demos. And obviously they're good enough for, for paying public. Um, but I've watched the development. And that's what we're all in it for really to help and then in my opinion is to share it and that's why i set up the gilbert's forum do you know what i mean to share so people can go and be part of this even if they're not part of a circle be part of what i mean could somebody from the public come in to gilbert sanctuary and be part of one of these seances oh i mean one of the seances yes as i say it's like um jenny sanctuary banyan scarborough hafan coed that's another one in wales Obviously, I run public demos here, and I'm, it's a Sumpty accredited anyway, so we run on those lines, so at least they know that at least it's professional and not just a shed up the road. Do you know right, what I mean? Right, right. So people, people are screened and have disclaimers and send out sort of safe-sitter safe sitter behavior, and then before they sit, the medium will, will give them a talk. Because, again, as you know, it's dangerous. You know, I mean, well, it's the most dangerous form of... Um, mediumship there is isn't it and you go look at Helen Duncan and Alec Harris but yes you're right but because what I find here is because we only have 12 people I mean I've got long waiting lists whereas perhaps if you go to one of the bigger lovely venues there's more places do you see what I mean when the meetings are around but people are always welcome and what I adore as well is you know they sort of come from Australia, a couple from America, a couple from Malta, probably because they're passing through. But you meet these people and you set up networks. And then maybe they go off and set up a circle of their own because they're so impassioned by it. So it spreads, doesn't it? Like a stone in a pond. Yeah, it's great. Um, and I, I just think, well, to me, that's what the purpose of, of this place is, is about, really. Um, and it's all, quite, it's all quite wonderful, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, and there certainly are plenty of us looking and excited and interested in this. If this is your first episode, you might be thinking, "What are the are they talking about?" You know, it's it's uh, you know, it took me a very long time in my quest for looking for evidence of the afterlife to even find out anything yeah. about physical yeah. mediumship. But you know what? Why not? There's so yeah. many miraculous things that happen uh, with manifesting through energy, even, you know, people that get signs from their loved ones and things happen and uh, whether it's a butterfly that shows up or a song plays on the radio, uh, you know, whatever this manipulation of energy is, you know, why not have it in the seance condition that these things happen? I think it's beautiful. I really do. I think the other thing that really 
quite excites me. I mean, there's so much one could talk about. But, you know, I have followed, because I choose to, we all have Montague King. I don't know if you've heard of Montague yes. King. Yeah. Um, because he was a sort of paranormal investigator, scientific researcher, as some people call him. And when I listened to one of his videos by his wife, and I was talking to Robin Foy about this, because Robin Foy sat there at this, and it's so lovely. Robin comes up on Gilbert's and puts all sorts of info, and I'm so grateful. And it's such a privilege, because you know, that man, as you know, has got years of experience. Yes. He's so rich, isn't he, in everything, not just skull, in everything. And when he says, oh, yeah, yeah you know, Winston spoke through me, and, blah, and I'm thinking, oh, my God, well, we should tell us more. But the Montague Keen in, um, audio I put up on... Gilbert's recently, um, his wife said that they were told in one of these audios, and I thought this was rather exciting and rather relevant, that um, they were told by spirit <clears throat> that there were portals opening in so many places now. And, you know, portal being a, or a vortex, whatever you've got, as we got downstairs, a, a sort of passageway to the other side of life, you know, between the two worlds. And I thought, my goodness, how exciting. And uh, I said to um, Robin, had you heard of that? And he said, oh, yes, I was at that seance. And gosh, how amazing. And this is beautiful. He said he, um, Montague Keen had sat, maybe you know this, but Montague Keen had sat in one of the skull sittings. And at that time, he'd given Sandra Foy a crystal, just as a gift, you know, when he was alive, this side of life. And I was talking to Robin about this particular audio, and I said, did you, did you know about this, this, this concept of um, portals opening? He said, oh, gosh, yes, we were at that seance. And he said, you know what? Monty came through, and it was a David Thompson seance. Monty came through, I think, four days after he'd passed, and walked over to Sandra who'd got this crystal in her pocket. Um, obviously, she had it as a keepsake, you know, from when he passed. And Monty said to her, to Sandra Foy, I believe you've got something of mine. And he put his hand in her pocket. You know, I mean, what evidence is that? Isn't that beautiful? He materialized and walked over yes. to Sandra and took the crystal out, out of her pocket. And I said, oh, gosh, Robin, thank you so much for sharing that. Wasn't that wonderful? Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Our time's going by very quickly here. Um, no, I'm sorry. Uh, it, no apologies needed because you, what you've done, which is perfect, has left me wanting more, and I'm sure okay. others others as well. Uh, when you talk about Gilbert's, you talk about your website, gilbertsanctuary.co.uk, where these audios yes. are. Yes, and I think more. I mean, I use that, obviously, more as a write-up of seances that we've had here or a diary. But it's the forum that is really rather nice for people to join because they can share or they can see what other people are sharing. You know, and with 7,000 people on there, you get quite a few people 7, coming up. 7,000 people. Mm. Yeah. So yeah. for anyone who thinks this isn't a uh, very few people interested, not true. <laughs> Many people. Uh, yeah. No, that's right. I mean, the people are so welcome. And as I say, the only rules there, like for any group, is I won't take ridicule and, mi and negative and mockery. You know, polite debate is fabulous, isn't it, with respect? And, I mean, we don't have any trouble because people don't. But, uh, I mean, I'm learning all the time. So, crikey me, you know, when I find something wonderful like these many, many mediums of the past, I think, oh, gosh, I've got to share that. And then if people want to look, they'll look, won't they? And it's... Um, it's just there if people want to really and it's also there to share because they know that they know they're in a safe place and that's important to me even to put pictures of orbs up or stuff up that other people laugh at right you know why not put it up and let people make comments and people have got to learn haven't they so uh, that's why i like it it's just a safe place to share anything within reason <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah that's how i feel i just started our facebook group we don't die yes. yeah and yeah. just in a short amount of time we're approaching 1400 people in just a few weeks time people interested ah, you know yeah. and and so many of us don't have people in our day-to-day -day lives that we can talk to about this that won't oh, look at us a little strange uh, and yeah. just to be able to find like-minded souls who are interested 
It's so and I, and great. I think you, and I'll just say this very quickly because I'm sure I've mm-hmm. taken up far too much of your time. But what I also find extraordinarily impassioning about this is there's so many parallels to physical mediumship. I look at shamanic practices oh. with Dr. Neil in Lilydale, you know, the sort of seat of spiritualism, who runs the Uwuppi ceremonies where Kai goes sometimes. And when you look at his report, and I say, gosh, you know, this looks so parallel to Western um, physical mediumship. He said, well, exactly. And Kevin Lee, who I think you, is a friend of mine, who you spoke to West about Street, precipitation, yeah. didn't you? Obviously, he's been to them. But I find that so enormously interesting, the different variables that you can move into perhaps one would call traditional physical mediumship and I think they call it exotic, you know, for want of a better word. Mm -hmm. But you can still see the parallels. And crikey, if you think about it, places like Brazil and those areas of the world, they must have been having materialisation for years that we don't even know about, don't you think? I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure they have. We just don't have that feedback or that research really so it just fascinates me what's going on in other cultures perhaps that's what i mean (laughs) no i think it's important because i think the time is coming for people to embrace and have a backbone to share that life after death is real there are many ways that we can communicate with our loved ones i think the spirit world is uh, definitely our partner, 50-50, in on this. And yes. grief to me, Sue, is the most painful thing I've ever experienced. Terrible, isn't it? Terrible. Yes. And if we can help open people's eyes to uh, death being an illusion, uh, we'll see our loved ones again. We will yes. both get to play on either side of the spectrum, whether we're visiting a, a physical medium circle uh, while we're here on earth or from the other side of life i have uh, you know i'd love to participate and show up and, yes. and speak yes. and i mean who knows but to know that this <laughs> this is possible yes and i think i think even us don't you uh, me sometimes even us are so heavily into it and have got so much evidence or we feel evidence for ourselves because it's perception you know what i might believe not everyone else will but that's up to them even now, now and again, you have that little bit of doubt, don't you? So Always. until we're on the other side, you know, and, yeah. and then, even then we don't know all. As they say, we just begin to learn on whatever realm we're on. But, you know, there's always that little bit of doubt, however good the evidence has been. I suppose that's the human state, is it? You Absolutely. Know? I've spent over 20 years. You've spent many years searching these things. And every so yeah. often, the little voice in my head says, oh, come on, Sandra, you know. You didn't really do all that. You know, it's crazy, but that that's part of being human. And, and I do say, you know, this is a private, personal journey for each one yeah, of us. Yeah. Just because you listen to this show or go to a seance or be part of one of the Facebook groups doesn't mean you need to push it on people. Certainly, it is fun to have people that uh, want to engage with you in these conversations. It helps all of us keep it alive. I'm sure by you having the Gilbert Sanctuary, you know, there's no turning away from it. You are... Yeah. Part of it. Yeah, and I said, from my point of view, I speak to them every week, whether it's home circle or whatever, and I, f- I fancy I'm really lucky. But even then, now and again, I think, hmm, is that astral limitation? Is that genuine? But, you know, if you're sensible, when they come through, you question them, don't you? And yeah. you soon find out whether it's genuine when they usually are beautiful, lovely souls that they jolly well come at all, I think. Oh. But there's so much there's so much to learn. I'd love to study demography and stigmata like Kevin Lee is and slate writing and do you know what even these um craig i'm sure you've heard of dr craig hogan i yes. guess will be at your your symposium lucky yeah, you and i've interviewed you know, him twice on the show yeah, oh have you mm-hmm. the telephone to heaven or whatever i the mean they're supposed phone. to be really pressing aren't they with this yeah. itc isn't that amazing you know maybe in years to come, we literally will be able to. I mean, I know there's EVP, but I'm talking about real quality stuff. Maybe be able to say, hey, how are you doing over there? Can you imagine? I can <laughs> imagine. And if yeah. anybody's interested in, in these kind of concepts, I mentioned at the beginning the symposium. 
really is some cutting edge information about what's happening in the world of the afterlife. And it is yeah. phenomenal that people that are going to be there talking about yeah. physical mediumship. You must be so excited so about, yeah, it's all aspects, really. Oh, I, I am so excited. There's 500 people that will be there. Uh, most, yeah. most people traveling by themselves, you know, because we don't yeah. all have people in our lives that uh, know what we're up to. But to find a place that you're going to meet some of the best friends for life and to be able to engage in this. And I do yeah. believe, Sue, and I would think you would agree that to have a belief in the afterlife um, helps us in this life have a better life. Oh. Is that Thank true God. for you? I think, yeah, absolutely. And I think as a nurse or as a human being, never mind being as a nurse, it's not so much death that worries me or any most people. It's the dying, isn't it? Yeah. People don't want to be reliant on others or to suffer. You know, it's not so much the passing. But I, I always say to my friends or whoever I'm chatting to, I feel so blessed and so honoured to know there's another, that we just go into another state of being, another dimension, different energy exchange. Because then if you are in a position where you're really lonely, really sick, very very vulnerable, you know it's there's something else. You know, and I'm saying to them, I'll be saying, get me out of this body. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, was... It's just a lovely thing to know, isn't it, really? Yeah. That you can't sell to everybody. They've got to find that themselves, really. Yeah, it's, there's an expression that people love to buy, but they hate to be sold. So to not push, you don't have to. Let people do their yeah. own research. Yeah. Uh, anything. And be there, isn't it? Yeah. Be there. You know, if people want your opinion, I only give it if I'm asked. You know, exactly. And then, and, and then that's different, isn't it? Yeah, really? it's a personal yeah. journey for each of us. And some of us are going to be excited about physical mediumship. Others are not. Some people are uh, want to yeah. hear more about near-death experiences. Some people about reincarnation. Yeah. There's yeah. so many different things. Yeah. It doesn't matter what your passion is. You just take it. You run with it. You follow it. Yeah. You discover it. And you allow it to empower your life now. Yeah. So, yeah. Sue, we're going to wrap up this episode, even though I don't want to, but we will. Um, of course. But I want to just tell listeners, if you go to gilbertsanctuary.co.uk or even the Facebook group, um, yeah. the Gilbert Sanctuary Facebook group, and if you listen to this episode on YouTube, or even if you go to our website, we don't die radio.com and you click on this episode with Susan Filer. Uh, there is a link to the episode on YouTube. And just beneath in the description, I have made it very easy for you to click on the websites for Gilbert Sanctuary, the Facebook group, and even uh, some of these other folks that Sue has mentioned today, and the lovely book that I told you about, uh, written about the wonderful physical medium Alec Harris, which I do think it just deserves a read because it's so spectacular, uh, really great. Uh, Sue, thank you for being our guest today. No, I'm so, so grateful to chat to you. It's been most lovely. And just on leaving, may I please just say something? Yes. <laughs> I promised Stuart Alexander, um, who I'm sure you know, that I would just mention again, he he has put together, as you probably know, a double CD album of Wonders of the Seance Room of Mediums and Sitters, Now in Spirit. And I promote them here and um, sell them to people for him. That's what I mean, a minimal amount. And it's just that if anyone's interested in that... Um, to contact me too. That was all. Because I promised yes. him I would say can we, if you Can we get mind. that through your website or would we contact you through Facebook? Because that's yes, something Facebook I'm interested would, in. Facebook would be lovely, okay. yes. And then I'll, I'll just send them on for him. But, you know, it, again, as you know, it's sharing, promoting, supporting, developing, promoting yeah, stuff of the past that we don't want to lose, really. No, <laughs> we don't. Yeah. Well, Sue, thank you for being our guest. Thank you. And that's to our, our listener, thank you for spending this time with us uh within every episode yes we're aiming to give some good reasons to believe in life after death but also some good reasons to believe in you that you are a powerful divine soul here on earth just a temporary time to learn to grow to love to serve make a difference so many things but i want you to look in the mirror when this episode is over whatever you cross a mirror and just look into your eyes and know you are a divine soul this life as short as it may be is not everything uh, i heard a great quote 
uh, this life is but a thread in the fabric of your soul. So look Hmm. into your eyes, see, believe that soul is there, believe your loved ones and a whole team of invisible spirit folk are behind you. And you are so magnificent, so magnificent. So in closing, I want to just say thank you for being here. My name is Sandra Champlain, and I've been your host on We Don't Die Radio. All episodes are available at wedontdieradio.com. And there's almost 200 of them now. And I want to thank you for listening. Life is an education for the soul. Your life, my friend, here on Earth is very important. So use it. Go after your dreams. So I want to thank you for listening, and we'll see you soon.